Welcome back to the main stage. I feel like that music always gets me just jazzed up for our next speakers. Hopefully you're popping back in here from having just been in the sessions area. Maybe you saw some talks about guerrilla publicity or sales or hosting holistic learning for the future of work. Lots going on today in our sessions area and back here on the main stage. So happy to have you back. Up next, we have for you Liliana Schwartz Brunner as part of our Career Summit Day here at Women Tech Global Conference. Liliana, I'm going to welcome her to the stage right now. Hello, Liliana. How are you? I'm so, so excited to be here. I'm doing just fine. Thank you for having me here. Well, we are so happy to have you here. Liliana is going to be talking to us about looking back to make progress ahead. And she is a senior executive and strategy leader who builds and leads organizations that negotiate, win, and deliver large-scale, highly complex deals internationally for about $4 billion or more in global provider of products and services, including the telecom cable industries. She focuses on customer-driven results and forging solid relationships with C-level and influential decision makers across Fortune 500s. And she merges this deep strategy leadership background with an award-winning solution-driven mindset, helping build top talent teams in extremely competitive environments worldwide. And we know that competition is only heightening as we go here. So one of the things, Liana, that I saw in your, in your explanation for this talk that I was excited about was that you said in your takeaways today, you were going to share with us how you can have it all. And I am excited to hear about that, Liliana. So Sorry, over to you. Yeah, so, so thank you for having me here again. And I'm going to share a very personal, very personal, uh, and I'm very personal with you of where I am with my career and specifically, um, you know, the pandemic time. What happened with the way I think, what I have changed in the way I think, how I'm approaching customers, you know, how I'm nourishing this career to the next level. So, with uh, uh and i'm going to share some slides very personal i'm making this uh this entire discussion very personal so um so who i am so just a few words about myself so i'm first of all a mother of three uh, my the joy of my life um i'm a wife and i'm a general manager and uh president of north america and throughout my journey you know uh, i spent my life in different continents. So I grew up in uh, uh, in Israel, if you didn't hear the accent, in Jerusalem, actually. And half of my life, I actually uh, live in the United States with few years living in uh, in London. And uh, the queen just now just said hi there. Um, but but this is me, like in a glance. And why am I in Amdocs? And just a little bit about Amdocs, about my career. Um, and who is Amdocs? I'm not sure that the audience here uh, knows who Amdocs is. So just maybe just very uh, high level introduction. So Amdocs is a global company uh, for, that provides uh, software solutions for all telecommunication industry globally. So we cover half of the globe, 85 countries, and uh, we have uh, probably almost every tier one uh, around the globe that uses our services, including probably a lot of you can um, I recognize names in the United States like AT&T, Team of Verizon, and maybe more abroad like Telefonica and, and so on and so forth. Um, and as uh, as you mentioned in your introduction, it's uh, around a $4 billion company. Um, and I've been with Amdocs, and this is part of my personal uh, career story. I've been with Amdocs since I graduated my master's. So I have been over 20 years. Yes, yeah, hard to tell. Uh, over 20 years, I've been uh, with the company. And I grew actually uh, within the company, starting from uh, being a developer into uh, general manager and president in the company today. Um, and when I'm thinking about Amdocs and why did I grow up in the same uh, you know, company that I built my entire career, beside the fact that the company uh, is a global company that really fits uh, my personality, I really feel this, that we share the same values and values about uh, thriving through diversity and inclusion. And I wanted to share some of the exciting um, uh, facts or data that we have in our company uh, because I want to encourage others uh, to do the same. So, and, and because it's a woman in tech, I thought it was interesting to bring this data as well. Um, so just like for Amdocs, this is 32% representative of women. I think uh, it's rarely seen specifically on telecommunication as well as in software companies. 
But beside that, we can see there is a lot of attention uh, from the senior leadership to continue expanding the, and, uh, expanding the diversity and actually shortening or closing the gaps of uh, the gender gaps. And we see it all fronts in the managerial roles grew to 22%. You know, the, v, the VP positions were at 21%. I hope the numbers will continue growing, but staying with the company as my career, you know, this were some of the values that were very close to my heart. And seeing uh, uh, that I go along side by side with the, with the values of the company, and growing within the company that helped me stay and grow within uh grow my entire career with within Ambox. i'm sharing this information because i'm going to link to another very very exciting leader uh that shared the same career path as myself and i'll share that uh, in a few slides um and then suddenly you know we're all aware that when everything is was shining going uh, well for all of us the world has stopped Right, and I'm going to focus about the change and in the way I, I see and manage uh, my teams as well as uh, teams in Amdox and my customers. And here is, I live in Philadelphia, the streets of Philadelphia, the offices all got empty. And after almost a year sitting in the same chair in the same room, I said, things are going to change and going to change in the past and going to never look the same in the future. And part of the things that I've done on a personal level is actually um, changing some of the things about myself and about my family to get myself out of this mode of what I used to do versus where I'm going to be. And part of me and another 25 million households in the United States decided to take a path. And so welcome to my beautiful Joy. Her name is Joy. Uh, and she joined our family during this uh, uh, transition that you know we and myself, we as a family and myself, uh, went through uh, in order to, for myself, to open up to new ideas and challenge yourself to get ready to the day after. Um, so as you could see, we were moving around, staying in different places just to change atmosphere and make me think uh, differently uh, during the pandemic and try to see how am I adjusting myself going forward. Um, and as part of this personal growth that, and pain that I went through the first years of the pandemic, I needed to get out of my comfort zone. And getting myself out of a comfort zone, I actually decided on three initiatives. One of them, social media. I know it existed, it's not new, but I think the entire social media has changed. The purpose of social media, and specifically LinkedIn, changed its purpose to some degree. And it's not only about the professional uh, seeking, uh, you know, through the LinkedIn options, but actually presenting yourself as a human being, as a leader, and as a part of MDocs in different aspects. One is ability to share information with a broader audience and my customers around North America, share information while I still sit in my uh, seat in my room, share information in a very global way with my team and others that follow me. Another change that, I, and it's not by me, by my nature. It, I had to really get out of my comfort zone and get out there. And virtually, before I didn't, because I didn't know when I can do it physically. And the other part was chief. And I think part of one of those days was uh, allocated to chief itself. I joined the chief community. And I think it's, it's again, it was getting out of what I know and, and, sh and sharing and learning from others and getting a lot of networking virtually from different industry, different women leaders around the globe. And was so nourishing and so inspiring. I think that was another thing for me to get out and think differently because things are changing going forward. And the other one is sharing in, in through blogs, through uh, LinkedIn, sharing some aspects, a mix of very uh, authentic blogs of who I am, what I believe in. And, and that reflects on me as a leader, but it reflects also on Amdocs as a company. So I thought that that the change I, I want to embrace, and I, and, and I did it. And my first, and, and my first attempt, um, and I'm going to share my first attempt to to get the value from this connection was the uh, first um, blog that I published that followed by reaching out to 
one of the greatest leaders, I believe, in, in women leaders in the United States, uh, Tammy Irwin, who is the CEO uh, of uh, Business Verizon, Verizon Business. And uh, I approached her. I said, well, well, I'll approach. The worst I can do is that she would never respond. But she did. And she responded. And we started building this relationship through social media. We could, never, we could not meet. Uh, and through building this relationship, I invited her to join a joint podcast that I never did in my life. It was the first podcast I've done in my life. Again, trying to break those boundaries and, and understand the world is changing around me and I need to fit into a new world and actually try to lead some of it. Um, and then I, I had the pleasure actually to invite Tammy and she agreed. And, and it all started by just reaching out. Let's see what happens. Um, and this podcast was published, um, I think it's the most seen podcast ever. It was my first podcast ever uh, through the great indoors. But then it grew up my, my appetite of, of reaching out and using social media and, and being out there um, uh, brought me to, to the next level that I, I suggested to uh, Sampath. I said, well, I've done it with Tammy and we did it virtually. Why won't we uh, try to do another podcast um, and get to know each other? It was the first time again after almost two years that he agreed to meet us uh, and do the podcast uh, from, you know, virtually from Tammy to physical with Sampath. Funny enough, I don't know how many of you know, but uh, Sampath actually became, uh, Tammy is retiring and Sampath became the CEO of uh, Verizon Business. But this all I, I was not aware. And uh, back back in November when we met in the Mobile World Conference, um, um, as I said, in November. So all those trials of, of getting myself out of this comfort zone, trying new things, the worst could happen is that I would not get those approaches. And that, you know, that approach of social media, of trying out things, of daring, actually brought me to many new initiatives that actually helped me with my career. And by the way, as part of my responsibility uh, is Verizon. And, and when I got this responsibility, I didn't know a soul and we were in pandemic. Um, so for me, you know, using those techniques uh, out there and actually using it to some degree, a mix of a personal level with a professional level helped me uh, to build those relationships. So you could see like, I mean, there were other things that we start doing more in the physical format, you know, a combination of virtual and physical, which I believe that's what's going to happen in the future. But that worked extremely well. And I hope that those stories inspire you ladies there um, to try, try out, break your boundaries, because I think that's how you grow as a person. That's how you grow as a leader. Um, and that's how you grow in your career. Just uh, we can't lose sight of actually trying to meet uh, people in person. So just maybe the highlight of the story uh, that I was sharing about Tammy Irwin earlier before is, uh, is that we met actually face to face back in my Barcelona mobile world conference just this last March after not seeing ever each other. It was all through Zoom. And when we, uh, we met each other, we felt like we knew each other uh, the entire the entire life we hugged each other. Well, although it was the first time ever we saw each other uh, in person, so I think you know going forward. And again, thinking about what what this uh, presentation is all all about is looking a little bit in the past and looking how the past actually structured the future. I just wanted uh, to share those stories of my personal growth uh, throughout those uh, two years into embracing, you know, the, the, the new world. So um, another aspect of that was trying to see and help Paralympics, right? Uh, you know, we, we have not done it for two years and they needed the support and, you know, coming together throughout the pandemic and trying to get everyone together was another uh, fantastic connection as this to face-to-face. Uh, -face. And maybe just, um, I'm not sure where I, how I'm doing about the time, um, but maybe overall, uh, I mean, the message would be uh, is that you need to try to reach out new heights all the time, whether it's uh, on your personal level, whether it's with your customer, or whether it's with your own team. And, uh, you know, part of the thinking that I had during this pandemic is how do I reach out to my virtual team 
uh, which a majority of them I've never met in my life. Uh, and one of the ideas, again, it's a different aspect of social media. It's uh, uh, Camel. We reached out to uh, David Hasselhoff and uh, asked him uh, to uh, welcome the team virtually uh, to the next uh, year. And uh, he kindly did it. So we have a video here that he welcomed uh, my team together. It was something special, something different. And I felt like we were helping back the actors in the community. Um, and, but the most important thing I think we all took out of this uh, uh, event, virtual event with David, uh, is that he summarized uh, he summarized his vision, which I actually took as a mantra for myself and for my team, and that it's see it, believe it, and you will live it. So um, I strongly believe in it. And so that became my mantra, see it, believe it, and you will live it. And I want to share that mantra with you. And I want to try to encourage everyone else uh, as well. Try, get out there. You have my LinkedIn. Maybe I will be the first one you're reaching out and do the next move that can lead you uh, to new heights. That's an uh, overall story that I wanted to share with you. I don't know if anyone has any questions or um, how we want to uh, move from here. You bet. Thanks so much, Liliana, for joining us and for sharing your story and these good insights. See it, believe it, and you will live it I like that. It's an easy mantra, too. Do you have, is it, do you say this to yourself like regularly, Liliana? Do you have something that you, you know, like a mantra that you remind yourself of? Is this it? it this is it. This is it. You know, if you really see something and you start believing it, you make it happen. You just mm -hmm. make it happen. So, you know, throughout like all the different experiences that I shared, you know, I envision something, but I start believing in it and you could see the results, right? Uh, you know, and, and I just wanted to share something very personal, but that worked and maybe someone else can pick up from there and, and it might work for them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Has there been, you know, a situation you can point to with something that you looked at, you know, outside of what you already shared today, where you said like, that seems out of my reach. And, and how did you get yourself to believe it? Like, I think that's a hurdle, right? That we see, like, how did you, how did you push yourself really past that line? Oh, oh, it's, it, I remember my hands were shaking the first blog I did, the first post I did, the first time I reached out, you know, to Tammy and she responded back. But I had a, by the way, I had a very, very fantastic team, marketing team that, that actually helped me, helped me to get there, helped me with the confidence of reaching out, how to approach uh, through the social media, you know, what would be the right, th you know, things to say, how to say, you know, um, so they really, really helped me through this process. And, and even today, before I posting something, I will send them like, is that okay? You think it's okay because I know that it's uh, reaching out to so many people. I think uh, uh, this post, uh, you know, with the uh, reach new heights uh, that I did to my team, it, it reached within 24 hours 16,000 viewers or like inspectors, right? So it just blew out of proportion, right? It, and it's inspiring. That's and that's what I hope that I did here, and I hope uh, to continue doing going forward. Thank you so much, Eliana. That's a perfect note for us to end on together, I feel like. But, but we do have your LinkedIn on the screen here, which is perfect. Um, and if anyone wants to reach out to Liliana, she'll be around for a little bit. She'll be on LinkedIn. You can find her. And Liliana, you know there's a lot more going on today still as part of this Career Summit Day. So if anyone you know hopes to find Liliana, maybe she'll be around in the networking area. Maybe she'll be in the sessions. So we encourage you keep popping around um, with an opportunity to meet so many amazing people like Liliana. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me and have a great conference. Um, I love being here. So thank you. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for Anna and everyone else who all actually came together and this such, a, you know, performing this uh, wonderful conference here with us. Yes. Thank you so much, Liliana.